Welcome back. Thank Thanks. you for joining us on the RP Experience. I'm your host, Andrew Regenhard, and today we have Jess Morris, one of our top producing agents within Real Producers. Hi. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here today. Ooh, we're here. We're having fun. We're going to talk a little estates, different things like that, and we're going to we're gonna have a good old time. So, all right. <clears throat> First of all, Jess is an agent with Marzuka Real Estate. She grew up here in Florida, has a ton of knowledge. Um, after uh, school, she also grew her real uh, rental company uh, and got her real estate license right away uh, and has been pretty much in real estate since then. So, um, Jess, uh, in her free time, she enjoys uh, spending quality time with her family. She's married with two kids. Um, she does work a lot, but she has uh, some hobbies is getting out and uh, even getting dirty. So uh, it's pretty amazing to see, um, you know, work life balance. So pretty cool stuff. So welcome to the podcast, Jess. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So um, who are you, Jess? Um, tell us, you know, obviously you're born and raised here, like I said, but like, who the heck is Jess Morris? So my legal name is Jesse. I was named after one of my grandfathers. Okay. So um, everybody wants to call me Jessica and that not it <laughs> so You're it's like, fine actually no let's, let's like, not Ew. try to like just, <laughs> just, just call me by what i told you okay right it's Jess. and then i shortened jesse to jess because now everybody thinks my name's jeff so um <laughs> you can't win <laughs> you know i'm just i'm okay with it you can't win uh you grew up here right I did, did you ever move away well I well, you ran away. No, I, <laughs> I I moved away for like two weeks and um, to dental school. Okay, and then I decided I really liked my husband <laughs> and <laughs> at the boyfriend at the time. Okay, and so I moved back for him. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, it worked out. Where was dental school? In Georgia. Okay. Well, that's not that far. No, it's not. Kind it's a whole just, different world up there, though. I just went on a vacation. <laughs> it really, yeah, a moving vacation. I mean, two weeks is, yeah, that's people go on vacations for right. those. It was sad. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So you've been in real estate pretty much your whole life and you were super young, if I'm not right, if not mistaken, yes. when you first kind of even acquired real estate. So tell us your first experience with real estate. So my dad, so growing up, my dad owned a mining company. So we would, in, in South Florida, mining doesn't sound like we're not mining for gold over here. We're not? <laughs> no. <laughs> and so uh, my, my dad would uh, buy these large pieces of property, like 500 plus acres, and then they would dig the dirt. And the dirt was the foundation for all of the new builds out in the estates and even towards town. And then also some of the dirt is actually our beach sand that we have here in Naples, wow. Florida. So um, it's fake beach sand. It's actually, <laughs> <laughs> it was mined. But um, yeah, that's why we won Best Beaches. <laughs> because but of your grandpa. My dad. Oh, yes. your dad. Your yes. Dad. So my, um, I was super jealous that he had all this land because we would mm -hmm. always go four-wheeling and mm -hmm. fishing. And uh, I just was obsessed with the properties. So I went to my dad and I said, I'm ready. I was 10 at the time. I was like, I'm ready to buy my own property. At and 10, you wanted to own property. Yeah. Most, what 10-year-old ten ten, doesn't want to? Most 10-year-olds <laughs> want like, what, like dolls or like, you know. Nobody's got sport. time for that. Um. <laughs> maybe not. I guess maybe dolls are younger. I don't know. I don't have kids, obviously. Yes. Maybe 10-year-olds are into something else. But they're usually not into real no, estate. No, they're usually not. But I was jealous of him and how much fun we had on the properties. And so he made a deal with me that however much money I raised, he would match it. And then we would start looking for properties. Well, I found a piece of property. It was, uh, they, they had it listed at the time for, it was right at $12,000. So I was on a mission to make six. <laughs> so, um, 12,000. That's awesome. Yes. First of all. Yeah. Well, back in, back yeah. then, that's how much they cost. Back in the so, good old day. yes. So I ended up, I did 4 H for, uh, the Collier County Fairgrounds, you raise What's a pig. I know what 4-H so is. So you raise a pig and then you sell it at the fair and then they auction it off and then my dad cahoots another couple of guys in the audience to bring my bids up so it'd be higher and then so I'd make more money. So after a couple of years of doing that, I was able to raise my 6000 And so my dad, again, 
he made me responsible by doing that, even though he was part of that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, it's, it's, it's the, th- it's the meaning behind it. Right. It's the drive behind it. Right. There's a lot more than just the dollar amount. Right. Then, so he matched it. We had 12,000. He paid for closing and all that. And then I officially had my first piece of property at 12. That's insane. Yeah. And then it, from there, it just grew. The passion went crazy. Where's that, that property today? It is off of White Boulevard. Oh. And I sold it in 2018 nice. for 60000 And that was my down payment for my house I currently live in. That's amazing. Yeah, That's a good story, out. huh? <laughs> 12 to 60. Yeah. Good investment, huh? I, I think so. That's cool. Um, where do you mostly sell real estate? My homeland of Golden Gate Estates. Golden Gate Estates. All right. <laughs> uh, we talk about Naples. It's still Naples, right? It is. Mm-hmm. Right. So explain what what is Golden Gate Estates to someone that's not even from Naples. Um, the way I like to explain it is you have privacy. You've got tons of land, depending on how big you buy. Um, anywhere from 1.14 acre, 1. acres to... Um, we have pieces out there as big as right now 50 uh, acres. So 50 is a little hard to come by, but yeah, it's a um, big piece of land. <laughs> it is. And uh, so I, when I first got into real estate, my mentor was like, Hey, pick a community that you know tons about, and then you can farm that area. And from there, you become the agent of that community. Well, growing up in the estates, I only know the estates. So, and I couldn't fake knowing HOAs and I couldn't fake knowing, um, (laughs) you know, about these other communities. Like I know the estates, I know well water, I know septic, (laughs) I know land, trees, like that's the, that's what I know. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to do that. Plus it kind of pans out because the estates is the largest community that we have. (laughs) So, um, yeah, HOAs are not even 50 acres and you can sell one piece a lot and we have two zip codes. So (laughs) it's a pretty big area. Yeah, that's cool. Um, now talk, there's multiple things that people say, Oh, this is the estates. That's the fake estates. That's the real estates. (laughs) Come on, like get, get like, what does that mean? And why do they say it? Cause there's some like, you know, down a Mockley around the bend and up there. And then there's, Mm -hmm. you know, Logan Boulevard. And they say, you know, I live out in the estates. Like Logan is Logan estates. That's not the real estates. That's that's too close to town. When does the estates start? (laughs) At Collier Boulevard or 951. Okay. Okay, So Collier and East. Yes. Starts. Okay. There you heard it first. That's where the (laughs) estates start. If you're left or west of, uh, uh, 951 and call you're, you're not in the estates. No, you're in town. <laughs> you're in town. There is like Publix and everything yeah, on that exactly. corner. There's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. It's call you're in East. Awesome. All right. So what drives people to go to the estates? You think what's the, wh- why do people want to be out in the estates? A lot of my clients, they tell me that they want to be in the estates because they don't want the HOA and the rules and people telling them what they can and can't build build or how whatever color they can paint their house. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a lot of people that own their own companies. So they're able to have a shop in the back or a barn or horses, um, livestock. Uh, There's, you can have multi or not multifamily, but you can have like your house with the guest house. Um, How big? How big can you do the guest house? Because I know that's a common thing that people want to do. It but is. there's like rules and regulations on it, right? Yeah. It's like a third or something, It's right? a third, but there's more detail to it. But a third is the safe third, answer. Because okay. a lot of people go out there and like, well, I want to build multiple homes. It's like, you know, it gets a little gray area. I had an agent from west of Collier. We'll just say that. And she called and she was like, I need a piece of property that um, I can put about 17 units on. And I'm like, in my area? Um, No, I'm sorry. Like, I don't even know where to point you because we don't, we do single family and guest house shops, that kind of thing. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So when they want to get out there, you know, they want to be out there for the, uh, I guess, to do whatever they want. And that's what they mean, right? I've heard some stories. I mean, 
some neighbor that you can do anything, right? Yeah, you can even have shooting in your backyard as long as you have the correct berm and that sort of thing. So it's kind of a wild, wild west out there. I wouldn't go that far, but <laughs> you got you piqued my interest. I know. Well, um, yes, you know we love to shoot, yes, so yes. we do have that. But it everyone's really nice. It's a hard working class. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people go to work, come home, pay their bills. You know that they're just. I don't know how to say this. They're they're just good good people living right. the American dream. You're right, right. No, it's beautiful out there. Um, you know, me and the fiance are, are planning on uh, building out there. So, you know, I grew up in Wisconsin. I grew up with some land around me, um, and she's she was from Texas. So, um, that's what we look forward to. Um, I don't do well with HOAs either, so <laughs> I, I I understand why you're. You're such like a really. rule follower. I don't understand. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. You know, cross my T's, dot my eyes, everything. You know, so. Um, explain like the, there's obviously some monster homes and areas and stuff like that. Like give the listeners like a perspective, like I'm still naive, but I understand the basics of like closer to 75, closer to town value goes up a little bit, the further you out a little bit less, like where's the range? Like what can people expect if they're like, Hey, I want to move out to the estates, you know, like they've been only looking at properties in each ways and heart of Naples. Like what should they expect when just if you could give the a blanket, you know, overview of the estates, kind of geographical where and price point, different things, like explain to people. Um, what I like to do a lot of times is first ask their budget because that's going to tell us where exactly you're going to be. Um, it it is kind of like levels. So the more east you go, um, the the cheaper it'll be. The closer west that you stay to Collier, it is a little bit more pricey, but there are. Um, the land's pricier and then the homes are themselves too. But a lot of people will tell me, you know, they'll give me their, like their wish list, and then I can kind of s tell them, okay, well, I know there's a group of houses or a builder that likes to build in that area with this style house. Uh, like I currently, I well, I just had uh, 30 acres with a 9,000 square foot house uh, listed and beautiful winding driveway. They have pet deer in the yard. Like, it's very beautiful. Um, and then I have all the way down to a 1.14 acre piece of property, three bedroom, two bath, just the very basic builder spec home. And they get eaten up too. So it's... What, what's like, what do you see for price range? Like, what's the most expensive really you know, closest to 75, you know, east uh, or as west as possible. Like, what are you seeing if someone's like, I want to be out there, but I literally want to be like the first house, quote unquote, in the estates. Like, what are they expecting for lot value? You know, roughly, you know, obviously we're not holding it to you and it's what people are selling it for. Right. But like, what, right. what should people expect there? And then how affordable can it get when it's further out? We're in the millions, even like as close as you get with the property value, especially like off of Weber. Again, it just, it depends on the size of the lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like a two and a half acres um, can go anywhere from as low as the four fifty five hundred range all the way up to, I, I've seen even like 900,000 just for a lot, like not cleared, nothing on it. Um, and it also depends on wetlands. So that's a big thing that the estates has to worry about. Um, what are wetlands? So wet Isn't everything wet? <laughs> it is Florida. We are sinking. Right. Um, <laughs> so wetland determination report, It go. They there's a co couple companies that you can hire to do the report for you. They tell you um, what invasive species are uh, on the property, if there's any protected species, um, also like, we, I just had a report come up that there was a bald eagle's nest with uh, two babies in it. And so that obviously brought up an issue. And then there's also uh, turtles that are protected, which to remove a turtle, it can be as cheap as 2000 to uh, almost $10,000. Just a single turtle? One turtle. One and, and turtle. And most dens have two. So you have to pay for the, the two turtles and then you have to pay for the den. So it gets pretty pricey. Got a pickup truck. We can move some turtles. I mean, you could, but you'd be wearing an orange suit and uh, getting three free meals during the day. <laughs> 
That's crazy. Yeah. So it's insane. So it is. those are definitely some things to think about because people that are moving to HOAs never never thought or buy land in the heart of Naples. They're not looking at wetlands and different things. So mm-hmm. you know, wetlands is a big thing that people need to think about. They need to think about you know the creatures, the animals, and whatnot. Um, there's a slang term too, right? Like what is 1.14? Like they call that like a band aid or something. Band aid right? light. Yeah. Why do they call it that? Because the way, if I could go back into time in my magic time machine, I would go to the day that they plotted the Golden Gate Estates because it, the way that they did it is the lots are skinny and narrow. So when you put the house on a Band-Aid lot, which 1.14 acres is normally the Band-Aid, um, it, you can't drive around the back. So it almost makes your backyard only walkable. Mm, (laughs) So you're not able to, it's harder to put a shop or a barn or a shed in the back. Um, some, some properties, the houses are designed and scoot over to the lot line. And so there is enough to drive past, but those are very far and few between. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it's a long skinny lot. Okay. Um, interesting very interesting yes. um yeah if they could redesign it that'd be kind of cool but uh, a little late for that huh it, very late all so. right you mentioned it already um people started to move out there and they're like yeah city water you know city everything that's what they're used to so you're talking septic you're talking well what what are the pros and cons of some of those things and you know why do people like it why do they dislike it you know give the give the listeners like the the truth about that stuff So I have a couple of clients, um, I call them my granola clients. They're the, the hippies. They love nature. They love, um, the minerals in the water of the well. And so that's, some of them are very stuck on, like, we need to make sure the well's deep enough, but at the same time, we want the minerals out of the water. So we do have the water tested just so that they know. Um, and then, a lot of times I'll have clients, they don't like the well. Um, and so they'll have a reverse osmosis system put in and those, I'm not exactly sure how much they cost. I know they're a little pricier than just having your basic well and, uh, mm-hmm. aerator and everything put in there. Um, but I have great people rave about the RO systems and we did have one at one time when we were out there and, it was great for your hair. And mm-hmm. then, but the well, I grew up on well because we didn't have any money. So we, I had the orange water. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that too. So you can adapt. But I mean, most <laughs> people are doing kind of that RO system. They're mm-hmm. kind of like, and you would never know, you know, and if anything, it's way cleaner than city water, anything else, right? I actually like the RO system better than city water. What I've come to realize just because the RO system, it feels clean. And then sometimes the city water, I can kind of smell like the chlorine in it. And I can kind of feel feel it on my skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you might even have, you're going to have, if you have an RO, way cleaner water out there. I believe so. Now explain the septic too, because people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want a tank. That's gross. That's nasty. Like kind of talk through that. Like also like expectations when, if someone moved out, they're like, oh, so I have to empty it out every 30 days. Like what, you know, what, <laughs> what are the expectations? People don't know. Right. So the septic is the little tank that goes into the ground that holds all of your Byproduct. Waste, wastewater. Yeah. yeah, byproduct. That's the word I'm looking for. And um, and then they have a drain field, which kind of zigzags through underneath the ground also. Mm-hmm. So they're, that's a must whenever you're building out mm-hmm. here. Um, so with that being said, you don't have to get it cleaned every 30 days. Um, I have people get it checked probably about every three to five years. They'll have it checked. Mm-hmm but they don't really pump it until like five to eight years. Gotcha. Um, You just have to make sure that, you know, trees aren't growing into it or Mm -hmm. anything like that. All right. We talked about, we made jokes about Wild West and different things. There's actually a lot that happens out there. And, you know, there's probably plenty of pages and different things on social media. But what are some crazy stories you've seen just in general out in the real estate, or excuse me, out in the estates, and then also ones that you've seen doing transactions out in in, in the estates? Hmm. The, so the craziest, just like crazy stories, okay. um, crazy things you've seen, 
Um, maybe things that interfered with transactions. Okay, so craziest things I've seen out there were they this family had multiple families living on their band-aid lot they had taken rvs and almost made like their own rv park but they it was weird because they kept saying that they had all these code enforcement violations and they couldn't figure out why so i'm like oh well i'll, I'll come out i'll see the house we'll try to sell it and they told me it was a guest house well when you see it you can clearly see that it's not a guest house and so i had to literally sit there and explain why code enforcement was coming out <laughs> and pretty much read it to people. them. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it wasn't pretty, but that one, that one was really strange because like each trailer walked into the next trailer. So, so they like had a community, like, like homes all connected. So it was like RVs backed up down the lot, like down the side of the lot, but then they had cut a hole I wish I would have filmed it because then I could, yeah, it was, it was weird. So they like cut a hole and then like you tunnels? walk into the next one. Yeah. So it was one long hallway, but you literally walked through eight RVs and they had them all. And each RV was like a different family. I think one family had two, but other than <laughs> that, they were like all, yeah, they pretty much. So they were, they were living large. They had two RVs dedicated to one. Correct. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I what and they thought that the was county okay. the county was throwing a fit which they should yeah because like, you can't just do anything out on the lawn land. such a scary safety issue yeah, big time <laughs> I don't know yeah, if it's like sanitary and stuff yeah huh. no. anyways interesting <laughs> yeah <Yes>. um <clears throat> what about progression um you know there's a lot of people moving out there so talk about um what you've seen over the last, you know, 10 years of like how many people are moving out there, you know, how Tons. much it's, it's growing, you know, explain, explain to listeners. Cause people think it's still pretty docile. There's tons and tons of land. Like I've looked, you know, and stuff like that. It, it, feel, it feels like it's already pretty packed, you know? So talk about that. It is. And especially right now after the hurricane, we have tons of people that are renting out their houses to, uh, businesses that are going to be fixing Fort Myers. So it's, we're super full and um, the traffic's getting a little horrendous. So that's going to have to be another issue for our commissioners to figure out. But um, yeah, the, so when I first started buying out there, the lots that I picked up would be a lot and there maybe be four houses on the street and now there's maybe a lot available so and that's each street is about two miles long so um it's a tad bit of an issue <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, that's uh, why they say like land's a big big investment because they're not making any more of it no, and not. uh that's why the land prices have skyrocketed out there too because you know yeah. economics it's yeah Hey, we can't build into the into the ocean, right? Yeah. So the only way to get Not it yet. is easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, too bad I did it. I mean, they, it, it could happen. They, if you have enough money, I guess anything. You can do anything, right? It's true. All right. Uh, you love to be outdoors. It's one of the reasons probably why you enjoy the estate. So I tell do. us tell us what you and the family love to do um, outside of work. Um, we like four-wheeling. We have a side-by-side, -side, which is like a golf cart and a four-wheeler had a baby yeah that's one way to explain it yeah that's that's a good um, way to explain it. I like it. <laughs> um so we have a side-by-side -side. we love going riding uh, my dad turned one of his mining operations into a four-wheeler park nice um it's in fort myers so we go there um there's lakes and fishing so we like to fish um, my husband and i do enjoy hunting and bow hunting awesome. um kind of teach the kids that you don't have to go to the grocery store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, my husband does own a farm. Okay. So we are out at the farm a lot. Nice. And yeah, we're always outside. Mm -hmm. Outdoorsy. That's good. Very I think outdoorsy. that's something probably people don't get their kids to do enough, right? They're kind of glued to devices and different things like that. Yeah, we um, don't allow devices in our house. So my kids don't even know what an Xbox looks like. Nice. I love that. <laughs> I used to, I played video games when I was young and now I don't ask me to pick up one. I would mm -hmm. be like, 
what is this game? Yeah, Mario <laughs> Kart. That's about all I know. <laughs> and then that. There we go. <laughs> that is classic. That's it. <laughs> but I also did get one of those Switches things. And I have to admit, throwing like oh, yeah. sm- Super Smash Brothers and like Mario <laughs> Kart on, I'm like, this is sick. This is I awesome. Know. So much fun. Oh, yeah. Jess, uh, we've been having too much fun. Uh, we already are at a time, which is crazy. Oh, okay. It flows, it it flies by. So um, I really appreciate you coming on here and spending yeah, a lot of, of information. I know people are always like the estates, people talk about it, but really people don't have the knowledge and expertise like you do. So we really appreciate you coming on here and, and sharing the information. Yeah, no problem. I was honored when you asked. Of course. Well, thank you. Um, the information, if anyone does have any questions, will be in the uh uh, in the comments and the information below to reach out to you, Jess. Um, you. As always, RP Experience is extremely thrilled to have you on here. We're here in Venture X at the podcast studio. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episode. See you guys.